The last thing I wanted to address in this adversarial search lecture is to talk a little bit about stochastic games or non-deterministic games. So these are games in which we have some random element occurring during the game. It could be throwing a die or a dice or actually um, a shuffling cards. So this can uh, include the chance node in the search. We don't have any more only max and mean. We also have nodes for chance to occur uh, between the two uh, players. So an example of a uh, game is the backgammon that actually is the one of the very, very, uh, one of the oldest board games combining skills and uh, chance of the players. The goal is that, uh, given the board like this one, the goal is that each player needs to get rid of his um, pieces uh, as soon as possible before the other one uh, does. So I'm not going to go into the details of how the game works, but I wanted to show you that in this case, the game tree is actually slightly different from the previous, um, what we have seen so far for tic-tac-toe and for our toy examples, and also for chess, where there is no uh, chance factor occurring. So in this case, we're going to have alterna an alternation between max, chance, mean, chance, max, etc. So we're going to have our regular max and mean uh, working uh, and playing, but also we have this element of chance occurring in the middle between, uh, between them. So we're going to actually have, uh, in the case of Bagamon, we are actually rolling two, uh, two dice, which means that we're going to have each die, each uh, numbers on the die occurring with some probability. So we could have one one occurring in, uh, with a probability of one over 36. So we have six faces on each of the die. So for the Bagamon, the search space is no longer uh, max and mean playing just by themselves. There will be an element of chance in the middle that actually is symbolized here by the, by the yellow circles. And each of the yellow circles has um, some branching factor that actually shows the possible outcomes of rolling a die or rolling dice or shuffling a card. So for example, for the Begamon um, game, we are going to have an outcome on the two dice that actually could be either 1-1 one, one with a probability of 1 over 36, or 1-2 or 2-1 with a probability of 1 divided by 18, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to put all the possible outcomes weighted by the probability of the event of ha for happening. So we need to take into consideration this new element uh, in the search game in order to find um, uh, the best solutions for max. So the, the algorithm that could handle this um, randomness in the, in the game is called expecti minimax that actually generalizes the minimax algorithm to handle the chance nodes as follows. So this is a very similar function that we, that we have seen for, uh, for minimax in which we are going to have, if the state is a max, we are going to call expecti minimax on all the successors or all the children of the state. If the state is a mean, we are going to call again all the expecti minimax for all the successor of the state to minimize for mean. But if the state is a chance state, then we are going to call expecti minimax and return the average of the value of the successor. So we know that there will be a chance to get different, with different probability, we have different outcomes. So we're going to weight that by the, by the probability of each outcome to happen and get the expected value of those outcomes. So let's take a very simple example with coin flipping. So suppose we have an unbiased coin. So we flip it, we get a head with a probability of 0.5, we get a tail with a probability of 0.5. So suppose we have max playing here and min playing here, and we have this terminal state here with these values. So the way that uh, expected minimax would work is to, first of all, uh, get the, the so this is the, the min value, so we're going to get, uh, at this point, the value of 4. For this one, we're going to get 6. Uh, for this uh, min value, we're going to get 2. And for this one, we're going to get um, uh, 1. So remember that we're going to have max pick the maximum value of its children. Uh, but it is actually, we have uh, the chance uh, in the middle here that actually um, gives the chance of getting this outcome here with a 50% and the chance of getting this outcome here with 50%. So I'm going to use a weighted uh, sum of these two outcomes here and do the average of 4 and 6, which will lead us to actually uh, 5. So we get, I get 5 here. And here it's going to be 2 plus 1 is 3 divided by 2. So this is the average of the outcome weighted by uh, the, the, the probability here of 0.5 for each of the outcomes of the uh, flipping the coin. And we will have a, uh, a value of 1.5. And then the max will take the, uh, the maximum value of this two outcome and we'll end up with 5. So this is how we are going to weight actually the mean value that is being sent back by mean from the leaves by this chance note. And we're going to, of course, use um, so this is a, a simple example with coin flipping. So you could imagine with rolling a die, we have a different probabilities depending on the different outcomes we get.
This is just give you a flavor of what stochastic games would look like and how we would change the minimax algorithm to handle that randomness in the search. The function expecting minimax in this case will look like the minimax function, with the exception that we are going to introduce a third condition here in which we uh, consider the case for chance. If it's a chance node, then we're going to calculate the weighted sum of the probability of the outcomes for this node, just as we did now. So we take the av weighted average or the expected value of the outcomes of the nodes starting from this position. We are reaching now the end of the adversarial search lecture in which we have seen that games are modeled in AI as search problems and use a heuristic to be able to ev evaluate the game. So it's a complicated problem for, uh, for AI, but uh, it has proven to be actually a problem that's solvable for many complex games, such as chess or uh, Go. So we have uh, good algorithms for those. Uh, we have seen that the Minimax algorithm chooses the best, um, uh, sorry, it should be here, move, the best move, given uh, the optimal uh, play from the opponent. Minimax goes all the way down into the leaves, which is impractical given time constraints. And often we use uh, strategies such as alpha beta pruning that allows to reduce the search space and the game tree by pruning uh, parts of it. Um, this will allow us to go deeper and uh, in the tree with, uh, with the, the same time constraints, which actually uh, turned out to be to make a big difference when we search a tree for uh, the best uh, possible strategy to solve the problem. Uh, we could also use, besides pruning, some bookkeeping, some evaluation heuristics, uh, node ordering, and also IDS, or iterative depth search techniques, has proven to be not only effective, but also efficient within the time constraints in practice. And that's why we have seen a lot of progress in the last years in solving games that are very complex, as I said, such as chess, uh, Go, etc. I wanted to finish by saying that games is an exciting and fun topic for artificial intelligence. Because devising adversarial search agent is challenging because of the huge state space. So it pushes the boundary of the research in AI, and this could be applicable in other domains besides games. We have, for in this lecture, we have just scratched the surface of this topic. A uh, further topic could be explored, and this includes partially observable games in which we don't have we have impartial, partial information. For example, well, if you play uh, poker or bridge, you don't have you don't know what are the cards in your opponent's hand, so it's, you don't have a full visibility of the game uh, as compared to chess, in which you could see the whole board. Another point to mention about uh, games and AI is that, except for robot football, known as soccer in the US, there was no much interest in AI in doing in modeling physical games, so uh, such as tennis or other ones. So um, I invite you to check this um, website, robocop.org, in which you are going to see really cute games played, soccer games played by, uh, by um, uh, robots. Finally, if you are interested in chess, check out the evaluation functions in Carl Shannon's paper. That's a very interesting read. And the last point is that you will be have a chance to implement a game in your homework assignment. So have fun, and I will see you in the next lecture.